All right, so if you look at this picture under my fingers there, that is the cauda equina. And if you've ever seen a horse's tail, you know that's pretty much what it looks like. And when you, and so we have all of these spinal nerves that are extending down through your vertebral foramen below the end of your spinal cord. And if you look really carefully in the middle of that thing, it says terminal thelum, and that is that thing I was mentioning in the last video that I said keeps the spinal cord extended all the way down. All right, so I said that, um, and, and I want you to look at this. Look carefully at this stuff on the outside here. We'll be talking about those one and, you know, two slides downstream. And those are connective tissues layers that we'll be talking, that was an outer, the outer connective tissue layer we'll be talking about here in a minute. And it's called, it's one of the meninges. So two slides down, we'll be talking about meninges and you say, oh yeah, that's what I looked at there with the spada, spa, cauda equina. All right, so before that, you can see we have this cross section of a spinal cord and you can see we have two different roots. We have the, the motor root on the bottom, the ventral side, and on the dorsal side, we have the sensory pathway. And um, so basically what we see, and, and in both cases you see it, it connects to just what looks like a single um, sp spinal nerve. Now, within a spinal nerve, there are lots, that's a term for many, many neurons, right? So it isn't just one. It's a pathway that contains many neurons. And it ends up, we had said that, I, when I was mentioning those reflexes, I said, you have a neuron going in, and it communicates with the motor neuron going out, a, a sensory neuron in um, and a motor output out through another neuron. And it ends up, those pathways I was just showing you are, you have the sensory neurons are on the dorsal side, dorsal meaning towards your back, and then on the front part of it towards your stomach, on that side, we had the motor pathway out. Now, when we look at this up in here, you see that darker area inside of there? So we have the sensory pathway goes into that top darker area, and the motor pathway comes out the lower portion of that. Those, that's the gray matter. So we have the white matter, and we have the gray matter. Now, in our very first lecture, we had said peripheral, in the peripheral nervous system, all neurons are myelin, either have Schwann cells wrapped around them or are associated with a Schwann cell. Remember, myelin. And then we had said in the central nervous system, spine and brain, we had said some neurons are myelinated, having oligodendrites associated with them, and some are not. And it ends up, when you look at that cross-section of the, of the spinal cord, the white areas have oligodendrites, and the gray areas, the darker ones, do not. So it ends up, as that spinal neuron is coming in, coming in to the spinal cord, it goes through what we call the dorsal horn. So it's the dorsal root feeds in to the dorsal horn of the of the um, gray matter, right? And so it comes in into that gray matter, and then we had said it communicates in that gray matter to a motor neuron, which goes out through the motor pathway. And so in, around, and back out, that's a reflex arc. And so, so we have the dorsal horn is sensory, the ventral horn is motor, and then we have another 
output area that we'll talk about in a special part of the nervous system, um, which is the autonomic nervous system. And that's gonna involve something we call the lateral horn, the in-between, sort of a middle, middle horn. Um, and that's only in the thoracic area. Okay, so, so we have this um, reflex arc that is gonna involve this pathway. Now, I'd said the simplest reflex arc was the patellar, the patellar reflex, right? And th but then I said that other reflexes will have a third nerve. So we're, what's really remarkable is there's only one neuron from your toe into your spinal cord, and then from your, inside your spinal cord, out. Okay, so we'll say from the, let's, let me make a different example. From your patellar ligament there, the patellar tendon rather, there in your knee, you have one neuron that goes from there into that gray matter through the dorsal horn, right? So it goes to the sensory pathway into the dorsal horn and it communicates with one other neuron, which is a motor neuron, which goes out to your quadricep muscles and causes you to kick. Now in other cases, and that, that's very rapid because it only involves two neurons, now, in other cases, there's a third neuron involved, and it's one that's in between, and we call that an interneuron. So when we talk about reflexes, we'll talk about two or three neurons only. All right. All right. So, so we'll come back to that here in, in a few minutes. Uh, I want to um, talk about these meninges. It looks like it looks like a rubber glove or something that's been cut open so that you can see those spinal nerves, that cauda equina in there. And so it ends up you have all these different layers. You have three different layers of connective tissue. And that outer one, that really thick one that looks like a Playtex rubber glove is what we call the dura mater. It is the toughest layer of connective tissue that surrounds the spinal cord. Now, we then have another layer inside of there that is in between, and it is the arachnoid mater. Sounds like a spider, right? And the reason we, we call it that, quite honestly, is because underneath it, neath it we see, you know, Scientists are geeks. What can I say? So somebody said, wow, it looks like spider webs in there. I know. We'll call this the arachnoid mater. And then laying on the surface of the spinal cord, we have this very delicate little layer called the pia mater. So the meninges consist of three layers, a tough outer layer, the dura mater, a middle layer that has spider webby stuff underneath it called the arachnid mater, and then this very delicate, soft, tissue papery kind of a layer called the pia mater. Now, um, so if you think about that, you say, okay, so if we have layer, 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 that means space and space, right? A space below the the dura mater that's the subdural space and then we had said we got that arachnoid mater and then beneath it we have the sub arachnoid mater right and then below that is the pia mater that layer so if you have three layers then you have the you have spaces between those layers it's only logic right um, so we have, um, what about those of you that have had babies or that will have babies, you might get what we call an epidural, right? And so what that is, is it's a shot or a block. They call it an epidural block and it's they administer anesthesia into the 
epidural space. Now, it's not subdural. It's above the dura mater. That's the epidural space. And then, you know, subdural and then subarachnoid. Okay. All right, so I had said, so all of these things, all of these layers are there. And we had said that the pia mater is... It's that little thin layer, and if you think about, we had said that we have an, an extension out of the bottom of the spinal cord that keeps the spinal cord fully extended. We called it what? The terminal phelum. That's right. It is continuous with the pia mater. So the part that keeps the spinal cord fully extended is continuous with the inner meningi layer called the pia mater. Um, all right, so we have, we have this extension out the inferior portions of the spinal cord to keep it stretched out, and then we actually have some little connections on the sides, right? And these are called the denticulate ligaments. There are 21 pair of these along the way down the side, and it sort of keeps everything from banging around in there. If you had a rope or something inside of a bony structure, it would, you know, bang from side to side. Well, we've got these little ligaments, these denticulate ligaments, that are going to prevent that lateral shaking around in there. Okay? Um, so, so let's think about this. So when you have a spinal tap, yikes, where do they go? They go L3 or L4. Hmm. Why is that? So what are they doing? They're going in there and they're getting a little cerebrospinal fluid. And it's scary. It, it can be scary because you don't want the needle to, to injure a nerve. So what do they do? They go below the spinal cord. We said the spinal cord only extends down to L1 or L2. So where do they go? L3 or L4. And that way they can prevent or limit the risk of injury. And so this is also where you get spinal anesthesia and so forth. That's why it's in your lower back. All right, time for me to stop again. Time flies when you're having fun. All right, I'll be right back.